Oh, triple defense Shackley. All right. Yep. Thank you.
Good evening and welcome to St. John the Evangelist Parish this fourth Sunday of Lent. Please stand and join in singing our opening song, Hosea. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Good evening. Good evening. And welcome as we begin our fourth Sunday of the Lenten season. We just sang, Come Back to Me with All Our Hearts, some of the very first words we sang at the beginning of Lent. And so with confidence we ask forgiveness of our sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, Grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, we may hasten toward the solemn celebration to come. This we ask through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. 
A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me, and he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raise us up with him and is seated with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift of God. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works, that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Christ, King of endless glory, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that all who believe in him might have eternal life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King. Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Jesus. Whoever believes in Jesus will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. The 13th century was a great century for religious orders and a great number of saints, holy men and women. Began in the early 1200s with St. Francis of Assisi, but also amongst the great saints in the 13th century was St. Bonaventure and St. Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas, probably the greatest theologian of the entire history of the church, past, present, and right up to this very moment. So here are these two great saints, two great theologians, two great priests, Thomas Aquinas, a Dominican friar, St. Bonaventure, a Franciscan friar, 
both writing theologies, both writing about God, both professors in famous universities. And the greatest of all theologian, Thomas Aquinas, uh, ends up over at the Franciscan Friary where Bonaventure lives. And as the story goes, Bonaventure welcomes Thomas Aquinas. Thomas Aquinas said, I'm so impressed, I'm so enamored by your theology and your concepts of God and the Trinity. Where do you get your material from? Where do you get your inspiration? What inspires you to write such great things? Bonaventure said to Thomas Aquinas, come with me, and he takes him down the hall to his little prayer room, and on the wall of his prayer room is this beat-up old black crucifix touched, kissed, and Bonaventure says to Aquinas, this, this is where I get my inspiration from meditating on Christ crucified. And it reminds us of that saying in today's gospel, just as Moses lift up the serpent in the desert, so much the Son of Man be lifted up. Just like our Catholic Church and most Catholic Church, we lift up the crucified Jesus on the cross. As I often say, hopefully every home has a crucifix that is lifted up. And may we take on the practice of St. Bonaventure, not just placing the cross in our homes or in our church, but may we take the time each day to ponder the meaning of the crucifixion. May we meditate on Jesus crucified. May we allow our eyes to gaze deeply as to what the meaning of Christ crucified is for us even in the 21st century. In the beginning of the 1200s, the 13th century, this is what St. Francis did, one of the founders of the largest re religious communities throughout the world. Here's Francis and his conversion in a beat-up little old country church called San Damiano. The roof is off, the walls are falling, but the crucifix remained in this diminishing church. And there's Francis right in front with his eyes gazing on the cross. He said the eyes of the crucified Jesus opened and his mouth opened and said, Francis, go rebuild my church. And so it's a great invitation for us also to Ponder, as the church invites us during these days of Lent, to ponder the passion of Christ. Christ crucified every church like ours, have the stations of the cross. May they not just be something there to fill the walls, the empty walls, but may we take to heart and bring into our mind and heart what is it that is happening as Jesus walks his passion to be crucified, to suffer, and to die for you and I. As we ponder and gaze on Jesus crucified, there are many things we see of Jesus, his physical suffering, his humiliations, the mindful of Peter denying him, Judas betraying him, his other apostles running in fear, and so much of that is who we are as people, our own fears we bring before the crucified Christ, our own humiliations, our own fear of being left behind, betrayed by our friends and families and those who are dear to us. St. Bonaventure is later quoted as saying that if we wish to grow from virtue to virtue, from grace to grace, then often daily we need to ponder 
and meditate on the passion of Christ, to grow from virtue to virtue, to grow in holiness. And what are those virtues that Bonaventure speaks of? I'm sure we can name off the first three, faith, hope, and love. But there are other virtues that we as baptized disciples of Christ need to grow in. Our humility, perhaps one of the greatest culprits of our sins is pride. And indeed we need to grow humbly and with patience, with perseverance and obedience to the word of God. When I was a youngster, and when many of you were youngsters, this fourth Sunday of Lent was called Letari Day Sunday. It meant rejoice. And the priest on that Sunday always ro wore rose-colored vestments. And of course, kids said, yes, it's time to rejoice because it's that much closer to the Easter Bunny. <laughs> but we as Maturing in our faith, realize we rejoice because we are that much closer to celebrating the resurrection of Christ. Christ being lifted up, yes, on the cross, but it doesn't end there. But he rises to sit at the right hand of the Heavenly Father. And then his ascension to be with God forever and the desire of God is what? That we too will rise to eternal life. And so may we take the lives of these great saints, especially the 13th centuries, Thomas Aquinas and Bonaventure to heart, to gaze upon Jesus crucified. And as John's gospel so beautifully tells us on this fourth week of the Lenten season, may we who gaze upon Christ, may we who believe in Jesus have faith and trust in life eternal, in the joys of heaven forever and ever. So we rise as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen. To God who desires to give us the fullness of life in heaven, we pray our needs in confidence. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Lestecki, and the church, that we may continue to grow in our relationship with Christ and manifest God's unbounded love for the human family by our deeds of charity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for a greater realization of God's goodness, that we may recognize everything as a gift from God and open our hearts to accept the additional gifts that God has for us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who fear drawing close to God, that the Spirit will free their hearts from fear and lead them into an experience of God's love for them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of conversion, that we may lament our selfishness and hurtful deeds and surrender them to God in the sacrament of penance, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive, that as we experience the gift of God's forgiveness, we may seek to forgive others who have harmed us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, that God's unending love will bring health to the sick, food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless, and jobs to the unemployed, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may all be inspired by the Holy Spirit to serve and protect all life from conception to natural death, and for the deceased, Rita Conkle, and the deceased, Carmen Arredondo, for whom this Mass is offered, and for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our Almighty God, like the holy men and women who have gone before us, may we place our gaze on Jesus crucified and risen. We ask this in all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church.
Almighty God, we place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as fitting for the salvation of all the world, we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. By the mystery of the Incarnation, Jesus had led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of faith and has brought those born in slavery to sin through the waters of regeneration to make us your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. You are indeed holy, Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus always be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. The body of Christ. 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 The blood of Christ. Send us mercy. 
body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Is 
our restoration. Every scar we've carried, you have crucified. We are healed in Christ. Blessed be Every Wednesday during Lent, please join us for the Stations of the Cross at 6.30 p.m. in the church. The Rooted Young Adult Group is having a Lenten Holy Hour this evening, Saturday, March 9th, at 6 p.m. in the church with a social to follow in the hall. The Holy Name Society will have corporate communion at the 8.30 a.m. Mass tomorrow, Sunday, March the 10th, with rosary at 7.30 a.m., a breakfast and meeting will follow. Please bring your unwrapped new layette items and diapers next weekend for the parish-wide baby shower. See the bulletin insert for more information. The Roses for Our Lady Hour will be on Sunday, March 10th at 2 p.m. with a reception to follow. The St. John's Compassion and Action Drive continues this week with art supplies. You can donate items in the narthex or at the parish office. Script will be sold after all Masses. Let us pray. O oh God, who lighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our minds and hearts with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you and love you in all sincerity, which we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. 
be our protection against the wickedness and errors of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our Lady of Victory. We will have the anointing of the sick after Mass. If you're having surgery or have a chronic illness, this would be a good time to partake in the sacrament of the sick. In two weeks with Palm Sunday, we're looking for six individuals to bring up the process up with the palm branches. If you're able to do that, please sign up on the counter in the narthex. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in God's peace. Thanks be to God. Oh